Welcome to the Creative Community. I'm your host, David Starkey, and my guest this time is Grace Rocco. Grace, welcome. Well, thank you. It's really fun being here. I really enjoy talking to you. Today. Yeah, I, well, we've been laughing up a storm here over the last 20 minutes. I hopefully uh, we can continue that. But you are the director of the Santa Barbara Writers Conference, yes. uh, um, among any, many other things. But that's the main reason why you're here to chat about it with us. And um, while people may be seeing the show sometime in the far distant future, we're um, talking just before the, the conference gets back online after a three-year hiatus. Yeah, that's correct. Cyber Writers Conference started in 1973. Crazy. So that's 50 years ago. So that was the distant past, and this may be the distant future <laughs> when people are listening. But it's an ongoing literary legacy started by Mary and Barnaby Conrad, they went to a writer's conference somewhere, right. and they loved it, and they thought, we should have something like that in Santa Barbara. Right. And they decided to start at Kate School, because that's where Barnaby had gone to school uh, as, as, uh, in high school. Right. And so he knew the people there and was connected, and they lived in, that, in the Carpentria community on the Rincon, and they got involved there for a couple of years. And Ray Bradbury came and kept coming mm -hmm. for many years. So the the Conrads knew so many people. Charles Schultz. Charles Charles Schultz. Every author, uh, if they were still alive, they came yeah. during that period yeah. of time. Yeah. And so it was a real draw for the community right. because there were always famous authors right. and also some other kinds of celebrities right. that would show up. Uh, Robert Mitchum was all, often uh -huh. hanging out here and there, and yeah. so it's uh, it was really a great start for the conference. And the real reason it stayed for a long time, I think, though, is because Mary Conrad had a vision. Mm. She understood so much about what made writers interested and happy to be around one another, how they learned, how, mm -hmm. what excited them, what was good. And she put together a design of a conference that we've kept intact all through the years. Mary is still living. Mm -hmm. uh, she's uh, going to be at the conference, I believe, oh, this wow. year. Oh, wow. Excellent. I, she hasn't missed one yet. Uh -huh. And I'm, ho I'm hoping that she will make it. She helps with registration, and she usually shows up for one or two of the banquets. And I see her several times during the year, and we talk about the conference and work out different things. So she's, she's an ongoing she's advisor. She's still very much a part of what's yeah, happening. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Well, I remember I moved to Santa Barbara in 2000, and I, I've worked several different stints over the years, but I was really keen to get in on my first time because I'd heard about these crazy parties at the Conrad's <laughs> house. <laughs> um, tell, talk a little bit about those, those there, parties. There were, some, there were some good parties there, and I, uh, the, the thing was that there were always celebrities because the Conrad's drew from their whole range of friends, not just the people that were at the conference. So right. there were usually some famous authors and then an array of celebrities right. that would come and there was a nice full bar and right. so there was a lot of writers do like to drink <laughs> right, right, and, yeah. and there was, so there was a fair amount of drinking and it's a beautiful area out there on the looking out over the coast yeah, yeah. Rincon the waves yeah. you see the surfers and people that was like the party of the year to get a ticket to it really was yeah and yeah. so it was worth teaching just so you could get to the party <laughs> Well, tell me about a little bit about Barnaby because people may not remember he, he was a he was a, a writer of nonfiction primarily. Is that right? Well, I would say he wrote quite a few things, yeah. and he started out with his first famous book was Matador, and that definitely was a novel, but it was based on the life of a bullfighter, right. and he had been. Uh, 
he had some kind of government job in okay. Spain when he was young. You know, one of those assignments right, right. you get if you're connected. Right. And he had a time that he lived in Spain. He just wrote and it all he, down and turned it into. And a novel, he took yeah. up bullfighting. Yeah. <laughs> American. He was a, the American bullfighter and. Right. He got gored, and then he decided to give bullfighting up. Right. But he survived all right. I think he might have sustained a limp uh, from that uh -huh. for the rest of his years. But he was a, a writer, I would say primarily of fiction, mm. but he did articles, and he, he was a real Renaissance man. He painted, he mm -hmm. sculpted, yeah. he uh, played the piano. He was just every, every art platform that he could, he could get. Do, yeah. He did it. Yeah. And he was uh, it found joy in so many things. Right. So that's we're talking you said was it 1973. Um, what's moving up into the 2000s and 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 then things change, right? I mean they the, the Conrads didn't own the conference yes, forever. The, the Conrads did sell the conference in 2003, I believe okay. it was. And it was Marsha Meyer was right. the Marfrey owner Marcia. for a while. And then Monty bought the conference in 2010. And then the first conference that was under his auspices was in 2011. Okay, so this is Monty Schultz, the son of, of Charles yes, Schultz, yes, right? Yeah, yes. people don't know. And the, Charles M. Schultz, the creator of Peanuts, came to the conference. He showed up at the conference when he was... Uh, a, you know, he was a cartoonist, and he just, just heard about the Santa Barbara. He heard about those wild parties <laughs> at the Rincon. He thought he'd go down and check it out. Right. He loved the conference, and he stayed. And he was a speaker there many years. But he just came, and he brought other people who came. And he was a real influence. He would talk to anyone. Mm -hmm. I was innocently talked to him one time. I had no idea who I was oh. talking to. <laughs> and I was chatting with him like he was an old guy who was writing and not trying to write a novel. Trying to write a novel. <laughs> and, Keep uh, at it, Phil. You'll, <laughs> you'll make it big someday, yeah. And uh, little did I know that he was the person who had bestowed Snoopy as our right. mascot and that his son would also be the a, owner an integral and part of the, uh, the benefactor, yeah. a longtime benefactor yeah. of the conference, yeah. keeping it going. Well, tell me a little bit about maybe the, the difference between what you remember those earlier conferences, Marsha's time, and then what we have now with Monty up to the present. Yeah, I would say that the, a lot of the flavor of the conference has stayed the same okay. over the whole 50 years. Now, I've only been there about 33 years okay. now, so I... I don't know what went before me except through stories that right. I've heard from people who were there. But the flavor of the conference changed depending on venue. Mm. When it was at the Miramar, it was a little, it smelled of mildew. The, the old Miramar, The yeah. old Miramar, <laughs> right. yes. Uh, with the blue roofs and the old rotting cottages, <laughs> and, but beautiful grounds. Right. And by the ocean right. and with the train going through. Right. It really had a flavor. And when we were at Westmont right. for a few years, it was a, a different feel, but lovely. That's Very a peaceful, lovely, yeah. uh -huh. lovely, lovely campus. And then we were at what's now the Hilton, a big hotel, and that had a big hotel feel to it. So that changed the feel mm -hmm. a little bit. And then we ended up at the Marmonte, which is a smaller beachfront hotel that is old and new it's mm -hmm. been re renovated but it was built originally in the 1920s so very has, charming place it, it, it is charming and it's it has a little bit of that sense of the old mm -hmm. miramar except tile roofs instead right. of blue roofs right. and but the feeling in the conference where people are coming together and enjoying one another's company finding mutual support finding that there is a group of people who think like they do mm -hmm which is something that a lot of writers never get because they're off uh, writing on their own and everybody in their family, all their friends think they're weird because mm -hmm. they write. <laughs> and then they go to the conference and they go, oh my God, people, validated, there yeah. are people who think like me. Oh yeah. my God, yeah. this is, this. these are my people. Right, right, and, my tribe. Yeah, yeah. my tribe, they, they find their tribe. Yeah. And that's one of our our favorite catchphrases, or mine anyway, because I think people do find their tribe, and they come back 
to the conference for almost a family reunion mm -hmm. every year, which isn't to say they don't learn, that they don't get their work critiqued, that they don't get a lot of value from the workshops, but the thing that they get a dose of is that sense of community, the community of writers that they also have um, just a, a, a real deep feeling. Mm -hmm. People have real deep feelings about the people that they were in a workshop with 30 years ago. Well, tell me a little bit about the people because you're, you're talking about something that they all have in common, which is that this, this desire to write and then this validation that, that they get from arriving at the conference. But my uh, experience is that there's a whole vast range of, of folks, but what are some of the kind of maybe specific, or if you want to be a little bit vaguer, kind of some of the people that you, you think of as, as really memorable conference participants over the years, people who've come to, to write? Well, as you said that, I got a vision of a woman who came during the Miramar days, and she often wore something that was a, looked like a tree on her head. <laughs> <laughs> and she, she was a very strange character. Uh, the a, a person who uh, was no longer with us, but we everyone loved was Stephen Vessels, who was a big guy. He had a big personality, a big voice, a big laugh. He liked to drink scotch. He was a great writer. He published several books. He was worked in the fantasy sci-fi area, right. and he was such a mensch to other uh. writers. He just was willing to sit down and help anyone, and he didn't think, oh, you're this or that. He, was, if someone wanted help, he was willing to help them, and I think that he probably is one of the more memorable characters. Fred Klein came to the right. conference from the time he retired from Bantam. The TVSB uh, icon here yes, for a long time. Yes, yeah. and he, he, he thought he was retiring, but for the next 40 years, right. he continued to live and support the Santa Barbara Writers Conference and the whole literary community here in Santa Barbara. Yeah. I was thinking of one of my distant poetry workshops of, of Carol and Robert. Do you remember them? Oh, yes. They, yeah. It, and, and Robert was older than, than Carol and wasn't much of a poet, in, 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 at least in his own mind, but he would always participate. And mm -hmm. I can remember, um, while I think eccentricity is kind of a quintessential part of, of the conference, that's also a, a, a beautiful thing. And, and, and people will just circling the wagons, if somebody tried something, there was mostly just a, a sense of like, I want to help you get better, yes. and, and I don't want to hurt your feelings too. Yes. I mean, that, like that you, you see the other people as human beings, not just you know, little folks in a chair at a, at, a, at a workshop. Yeah, exactly, and I remember that, that couple quite well. He passed away, yeah. and Carol went on to marry another man. <laughs> Because she, that's the kind of gal she was, <laughs> she was very, yeah. a poet and a romantic, right, right. and she's still alive. She's not coming to the conference, but she was signed up to come in 2020. Right. I think she's probably in her 90s, well yeah. into her 90s by now, but she we'll really worked her, yeah. hard. Yeah. Uh, she yeah. really worked hard, and yeah. she, she was definitely a memorable person. There were a lot of poets that were memorable. I remember Polly B, who was uh, very... Uh, she yeah. just had her voice, and it was so strong. And she was a, loved yeah, her. yeah, and she's a, a great uh, part of the Ventura, or was a great part of the Ventura poetry scene, too, yeah. one of the really important poets down there. So it, when you think about all, when I look at the photographs, there's so many photographs of the conference. I've got thousands and thousands, and I went, oh, I remember that yeah. person. Oh, I remember that person. And the all the people that have come somehow are still a part of the conference because someone remembers them, right, yeah. and that's a that's a that's aspect a, yeah that collective too. memory yeah. Well, let's we've got these photographs. So we've been we've been chatting so much, but let's let's jump in and uh, have you tell us a, a little bit about um, what we're looking at. This, this is, is Barnaby. Is, there he is. Yeah, we've been and talking about breaking him. Breaking up on stage, and he was reading the worst first sentence. That he had a list of really bad opening sentences. And he couldn't keep a straight face when he was reading them. He just started, he always cracked up. I think this is my favorite picture of him yeah. because it really showed his sense it, of humor. Yeah, I love that. 
And there's Mary and Barnaby again showing the sense of humor. Barnaby was missing hair on top, so he had a, <laughs> uh, one of the napkins at the banquet tied around his head to keep from getting a sunburn. I love that, yeah. And so they, they were real well, dynamic. You can totally, just, just even Mary's sunglasses, you get a real kind of 70s Santa Barbara vibe, oh, don't yeah. you? Like, uh, that's, yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, the, a few years ago, uh, Mary, Pat, Matt Palomari and Armando Nieto wrote the scrapbook, the first 30 years of the Santa Barbara Writers Conference. And this is Ernie Witham, our, work, our humor workshop, Susan Gilbranson in the background there, our one nonfiction workshop. And there, uh, Ernie's got the book and he loves it because there's a part about him that apparently. <laughs> well, and just to, to hold on to this for one second, I mean, we'll look at those two people. Those are two gems in our community. Ernie is so darn funny. Yes. Um, and, you know, he's always finding ways to help other people be funny. Susan is one of the, the kindest, most generous people, and, and the, one of the smartest people, too, you're going to run into. You know, yeah. She has a, a, a column in, in News Hawk for folks may uh, read that. But that's, that's the sort of people that you've got staffing the conference. And both of those people started at the conference as students, Susan in the 70s, Ernie in the 80s. Uh -huh. and both of them became workshop leaders and still yeah. are. So that's another part of the Santa Barbara Writers Conference legacy is people continue. Absolutely. And this is, uh, earlier I mentioned Stephen Vessels. This is Stephen working with a couple of students out on the outdoor area at the conference. And you can see how everybody's happy yeah. because uh, they're getting good advice from he, his, his head is sticking up into the sky. Uh, yeah, yes, he is, he is quite a tall guy. <laughs> and that's uh, the famous poolside cocktail reception at the conference. This has replaced the... Rin Con party that Mary Conrad used to throw in right. the wilder days, but it's still a pretty good party and uh, we love it. Yeah, and, and again, so if people are watching this and they're watching it in our real time, it's not too late to sign up for, That's right. That's <laughs> for, right. for the conference and go to that party. And, and this, is, this is the current uh, venue of the conference. Right, so right. It, it looks much like that. And that's a group of our volunteers. The conference couldn't go on without our volunteers. Now I and see on the far left our new poet laureate, uh, Melinda Palacio. Yes, yes. Who else do you, who else well, do you see Well, then there? there's Lisa Angle, who's always uh, involved in different things around here. She's come in this. TVSB, a, 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 quite, yeah, a steady quite person, a few times. right? Yeah. And, uh, and then uh, we have, uh, in the, right in the middle there is Steve Beisner, who is the First gentleman of the poet laureate, right. <laughs> and uh, Ward Rafferty behind there, who is, happens to be the financial advisor of the Melinda and Steve. Just, <laughs> just for a little background, there's Ernie again with his mouth open, and a, a stalwart of the volunteer crew is Jim Alexander uh, on the far right. Right. Let's come back to the studio just for one second, if we can. And um, I, I want to ask you a little bit about your job as the director of the conference, because you, you've been in a number of different roles. Um, what, what's it like to be, to be the, the person in charge now? Well, I, you have to forget about sleep for several <laughs> months, no sleeping. It, it's about a seven month job. People oh, wow. think, oh, you're gonna be busy in June. No, you're gonna be busy in December, January, right. February, March, April, May, and June. Right. And so it is a much larger job. We have 75 people this year in our staff, oh including Lord. workshop leaders, seminar leaders. You're gonna, among those I'll groups. Be out there, yeah. You're, you're, you're going to teach a poetry class and uh, lead a seminar. And we have the volunteers. We have the uh, the panelists, mm -hmm. the moderator, matter, moderators of the panels. It's the, it all adds up to 75. Parts, yeah. Yeah. And then we have about, we'll probably have around 200 attendees. So that's how big the conference is. And the contacting all of these people, dealing with all, everyone mm -hmm. is on me. Yeah. I talk to everybody. Yeah, all, all 275 folks. All yeah. of them. Yeah, I've got a lot of emails <laughs> from you just in my minor role this time. Yeah. But that's interesting. We hear 200 people, uh, approximately, and 75 workshop participants, or 
you know, leaders and, and panels and so forth, th that's a, a pretty nice ratio well, really for the, the, the guests, the writers coming in. There's a lot of people that you can talk to. It's not like there's going to be five writers and five, or, you know, five famous writers and 500 participants. So it's, yeah, it's, the ratio is incredible, and everybody gets good one-on-one -on -one attention, or if they don't want one-on-one -on -one attention, they can get good group attention. Right, it, yeah. it, there's something for everybody at the Santa Barbara Writers Conference, and it just has to be, because when you get that many people together, it's not going to be all the same. Right, right. I know one of the most uh, popular elements is, is the meetings with agents. Can you tell a little bit about that? <laughs> yes. I, meeting, uh, people want to meet an agent, and they, although there's a trend now toward people taking publishing into their own hands sure, and going yeah. with a hybrid publisher, People do love talking to agents because the agent somehow, it's like they had hold the keys to the kingdom right, if only right. they can get an agent. Right. And so we have a rather elaborate system for appointments and people come in and they're nervous. And we, they got to pitch really fast, right? Yeah, How they, long is the they, They've got 10 minutes, 10 minutes. which is a, a long time if the answer is no, <laughs> but it's a short time if, the, if you're if getting along. If the person's along. interested, yeah. So yeah. it's, it's an interesting phenomenon, and it's fraught with emotion. And we, what, I, sometimes I think, oh, God, we can't do this anymore. We're ripping people apart. Right, right. But the truth is that I think after people have an experience with an agent, they've talked with an agent, they lived through the experience, no matter they how they came out on the went, other side. Yeah, that they will, they're stronger for it, uh -huh. and they're they're more confident. And whether their work is ready yet or not, right, when it is ready, they'll be ready to talk to an agent. Yeah. And and I, you're right. I have seen people come out beaming, and people come out weeping. So <laughs> <laughs> all things in between. Let's go back and, and take a yeah. look at some more uh, oh, pictures. What are we a, looking at here? That's a banquet, an opening night banquet at the old Miramar. Wow. It was out on the lawn always, the opening night and the closing night. I, the, I, back then, it did not rain in June. It had to be <laughs> raining in June this particular year. Yeah. But the Though it was very popular, the food wasn't particularly good. Right. The dessert was usually bread pudding, which is odd. Uh, yeah. But <laughs> people loved the banquet, and the, the feeling of conviviality and community really reigned. And you could just see the sea of people. Yeah. And in those days, we there was were about 350 to 400 attendees oh, wow. at the Miramar because it was a bigger space. Bigger space, yeah. So you're limited by the, how many people yes. can come by this mm -hmm. by this newest venue, yeah. Yeah, that's right. And there are the chefs. So this must have been about 1973 or four, and the the servers were the formal chefs, right, right, which right. I didn't think kick, breaks me up whenever I <laughs> see the. the, the <laughs> Those guys in their hats. <laughs> they probably hated what Yeah, they I bet you they did. What is oh, this? and there's the train station. The Miramar has a train that goes through. It still goes through. It still it. goes by, yeah. But it <laughs> doesn't have a stop. A, a, a big fancy. But the Mir the old Miramar had a... I think actually it did stop at one time. At the right. Miramar. I mean, it doesn't now, but It doesn't yeah. now, but at one time it did. Uh, but they made a big deal out of it. And they had a train car restaurant and the... The sort of the stand, the whatever you call that, the where people uh, gather to wait for the train, yeah, and it, right by the tracks. It was a, had a nice feel. Yeah, I think people who are old time Santa Barbara is going to be looking at that with a lot of nostalgia. Yeah, and that's Monty Schultz as a young student. Monty, how old are you there? <laughs> I think he must be. I think he was probably in his early thirties okay. when he started coming to the conference. Okay and was reading in the workshops. He was a student just like all the rest. Right, right. Ah, and Annie Lamont, uh, I remember her talk. She <coughs> had just written Bird by Bird. Bird by Bird was like the, the most popular probably writer's it, guide in the world. It still is one of the go-to books for writers. She really hit a, hit a nerve with yeah. Bird by Bird. And uh, we... She had such a great talk. We really, really loved hearing her. Ah, and there is the three authors of the Santa Barbara Writers Conference: um, Armando Nieto, Mary Conrad, in, in the current second, time, right? and Matt Palomari on the right. And they put together this uh, great book, this great record mm -hmm. of the first thirty years. We're going to work on the 
rest of the years coming up this year That's or great, two. yeah. That's fantastic. Ah, and Barnaby Conrad, Ray Bradbury, and Vicki Paddock. Ray, uh, Barnaby, of course, was the founder. Ray Bradbury, the iconic uh, sci-fi writer. And Vicki Paddock is, a, was, is still a well-known screenwriter. Mm -hmm. All there having a good time at the... Ba at the, probably the opening night banquet. Yeah, and I don't. It's it's hard to overstate how important Ray Bradbury's participation is because he is still one of the most widely published writers, you know, in the he, English language. And he gave a really the same talk every year, mm -hmm. but it was it, people wanted to hear that talk again because he talked about love. He talked about the. Uh, observing that we're here to observe the universe. Mm -hmm. well, if you, anybody wants to know why they're here, he <laughs> had the answer, we're here to observe and write about it. Right. And he gave this always inspiring talk. He says, do what you love, collect what you love. And he gave that over and over again and it got people, yes, okay, they wanted now to hear I it remember. Again. Yeah. Now I remember uh -huh. what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed, it's all about love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I think that's kind of an interesting part of this conference. We just have a couple minutes left. Let's see if we can get a few more photos in. Ah, Fanny Flagg receiving the Ross McDonald Award a couple of years ago. Fanny started out at the conference as a student, became a famous writer. A very writer, famous writer, and, yeah. Uh, she still comes. She's almost there every year in the audience, if not on stage. Susan Gilbranson and Fred Klein, who we We've mentioned been earlier. mentioning, yeah. Uh, Mary Conrad, Jane Russell. And in the background is Charles Schultz and Catherine Ryan Hyde. You can't see them, but yeah. I, they're blurry in the background, but I know they're there. Well, there's Jane Russell was at the party, so yeah, yes. that's, oh, yeah. a, that's a pretty exactly. big party, yeah. And uh, Jonathan Winters, uh, the former workshop leader of the humor workshop, Ian Bernard in the blue, and then Ernie Witham. It was kind of the kind of the generations, of yeah. Humor there, that was a. Yeah. And uh, Ian Bernard recently passed away, and we have a memorial scholarship this year in his oh, that's name. Great. So that's great. And there's Monty Schultz and Karen Ford, who was married to Sid Stiebel, who also passed away just right. this year. He would have been 100 this year in July. Wow. So uh, they, that's back when they were students before they became. Uh, before they became part of the big. Yeah. Uh, wow. Well, we, we have a, a minute and 10 seconds left. So, um, in the, I know you're a Toastmasters, so <laughs> <laughs> 45 seconds. What, what is the one thing that you hope as the conference director of the Santa Barbara Writers Conference that people will take away when they're coming to the, to the conference? The main thing to remember is, is that no matter what happens, even if it's something that's kind of hard, that it will help you. You will become a better writer because you got slammed in a workshop and then because somebody came up and said hey you know what I liked I liked your dialogue I liked the way I, I liked the line in your poem I thought that was really good and that's how it works is they break you apart and then they put you back together again and you're stronger what a great way to end thank you so much Grace I really appreciate it okay the Creative Community is a co-production of TVSB in Santa Barbara and Caps Media in Ventura I'm your host, David Starkey, and we'll see you next time.